Hello, sorry, we'll try that again. I was just debating with myself of whether I should start the whole video all over again or just break it into two. So it's going to be in two parts. I got a new tablet after Christmas and apparently this one I can't make as long of videos as I had before. So I was talking about these socks and the yarn was a Willow Quest. And I was just saying that the yarn is a little bit thinner on this one, so you just need to uh, watch your tension so that your sock isn't so tight. Um, I did enjoy working with this one. Uh, I don't know yet how these wash and wear, but I will definitely give you an update on that. And another new to me sock yarn was the Lion Brand Mani Petty. So I had purchased this. I think it was on clearance at Michael's a year or maybe two years ago. So this is the first, uh, the first sock of my second February pair. Now I will probably have these done in the next week, so I could then start a, another pair for February, but I might not. I might just say that these are my February socks and um, be done with it. When I start making socks, I really get addicted to making socks because they're so quick, but we'll see. I do have a lot of sock yarn. I do have enough to do, you know, a year's worth, like one pair um, a month for a year. So I'd like to keep going with that. And I, I don't know, I guess sometimes I'll make more pairs than one in a month and other times I won't. Okay, cowls. So the first one I got done, this is called the Stitch Meditation Shawl, and this is by CJ Brady Designs. So there we go. I've made this before, and in fact, this was the one I made with the blue, beautiful blue sock here. And oh, that just breaks my heart because it was the most beautiful shade of blue. I just can't tell you. So this is this one, and this has some gold Stellina in it, which I don't know if you can see, but it's really pretty. Um, I had wanted this to be, to have this around the holidays, but I finished it just after Christmas. Um, I mean, it's pretty soft. It could be softer, but it's an easy make. I can wear this with everything. And it makes this edging as you go, so you don't have to go back and do it um, after the fact. So this one is, it's kind of like an asymmetrical crescent. Um, this, I guess that doesn't make any sense. It's asymmetrical, but it's shallow, which I like, because I don't like a ton of bulk hanging down. Um, or even up here. So we've got that one. And then I made, so I went into my stash, this because the whole idea of this. And I had some of this. Um, oh my gosh. If I only crocheted with this for the rest of my life, I could probably be happy. This is so wonderful. So this one is called the Cozy Diamonds Cowl, and this is a paid-for pattern, which again I will link below. That pink is gorgeous. I thought about doing the pink, but I didn't have the pink, and I thought, well, gray is a much more neutral looking. And this is what it looks like. And oh my gosh, it is so soft. I love this. I wear this in the house all the time. Our house is really cold, so a year of cowls is a good thing. So what I will do with this one when I wear it is I'll just kind of fold the top down a little bit and uh, wear that. But oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. It is so soft. Red Heart Hoog. Now, because I love that so much, I also had this colorway in my stash. So this one is called Cloud, the gray. And this is from, I had originally got that at Walmart, purchased that at Walmart. And this one is Lavender. And this is how much I have left of that one. And that I made this with it. 
guess I can take that off. So this is called the Chi Town Cowl by Kathy Kelly. Chi Town Crochet Cowl. And this was a free pattern too. So you make it flat and then you just seam it up the back. And if you want to do a little twist in it, like a to have a Mobius cowl, uh, that's what I did. So there you can see. And it's super easy construction. And like I said, I didn't even use... Maybe I used one and a little bit. So I still have some left over and I thought maybe I can make something else at one point out of both of these because I love this so much. I don't want to just give it away. Um, yeah, definitely going to make use of that. So yeah, this is my Chee Town Cow. Oh, I love it. Now I thought I was going to be stopped there. But one of the things I would like to do is try to get rid of my bulky, like the bulkiest yarn first. So I had one skein of the velvet left from this cardigan that I made last year. So I made, this is called the Easy Velvet Infinity Scarf. And it is by, oh, I didn't write her name down. Her blog name is Hooked on Homemade Happiness. So... This took, I had just under one ball of velvet left in this beautiful blue colorway, and this took exactly all of it. And this is another super, super cozy one that I love, and I wore this all day yesterday, and I wore it outside, and I wear it inside. I just find that with this velvet stuff, because it's all artificial, um, I get really hot in this one but it's so soft and beautiful and it's just a super easy stitch pattern it's just half double crochet and the half double crochet does really seem to help with the little worming problem that you can get with the velvet yarns so yeah four that's four cowls for january um i don't know if i should do one for february or not i probably don't need to but I think I will. I'm going to go through my stuff and I'll probably just pick something easy because I would like to do some bigger crochet projects in February and um, yeah, that'd be fun. So for the rest of my uh, crochet, I've just been doing like little things. I went through the bookmarks on my computer, you know, the ones that you like, hey, that's a great idea and you bookmark it and you never go back. So I went through my bookmarks and a lot of them, the links were broken. So I just got rid of those. And other ones for projects that I had seen and wanted to make, I thought, well, why don't you just make it and see if you like it? So I need new pot holders. And I found this was a pattern for coaster on a Dutch blog. And I just really liked the colors. So I thought, well, if she's using the really skinny cotton, I'm going to use my regular cotton and maybe I'll get a pot holder size. Well, it's not a pot holder size. It's an extra large coaster or an extra small pot holder, but it was a fun way to use up some scraps. And this was just all cotton scraps. And I mean, I can use it. It'll fit perfectly under my teapot or under my mug. So I'd like to make a couple more of these because I do have a lot of cotton that I would like to use up. I knit something. I found a pattern for a knit dishcloth, which I messed up royally, but I mean, it's still usable. And it only took me one evening and one morning to make, which for me is really, really good because a knit dishcloth typically takes me three to four weeks because <laughs> I just, I really don't enjoy knitting. Um, but this was fine and this was fun and I almost prefer knitted dishcloths because they're a little bit thinner. So, uh, probably try that again and do it properly next time. And then I found something I had bookmarked and it was from Interweave Crochet and they are bookmarks. They call them book thongs and they're beaded. And I had been reading, there's this blog I always read called Field Lilies, and she had made some of these a couple years ago. So this was the first one. And
then it's too long. That's kind of hard to see. Anyway, so I made this one. It's too long, but it has the beads in there, and I got to use up some of my pretty beads. That's not going to work. And this probably took me about an hour to make. It was kind of difficult because you use pearl cotton. Actually, I use pearl cotton. You're supposed to use crochet thread, which I think is a little bit thicker. So I thought, well, what about a lace weight yarn? So I got out my Lion Brand Summer Nights and I made this one. So there you have my... Anyway, just ignore my drawing of my quilt. So then I, I made this one and I made it shorter and I like this one a lot better. So you see it has a bead at the top that hangs over the spine and then a bead at the bottom and a tassel to hang up at the bottom. And then these were just beads that I had in my stash. This was from a bracelet the kids had given me years and years ago that just the elastic on it snapped. So I did that one. And then by this time I was totally hooked. Um, even though these were taking me like an hour each to make, I'm the type of person that when I make something, I always think, well, what will it look like in this color or this way or that way? So I got a, another Lion Brand Summer Nights and I made this one, whoops. I made this one and this are the lovely blues and greens that I love and some more glass beads and there's that little bit of sparkle to the yarn. So this one is probably the best length. The first one was too long. The second one was a little bit on the short side and that one's about perfect. And then I had these dark kind of smoky purple beads and I really wanted to use it. So my very last one, I had some dark plum pearl cotton and I made this one. So a little bit hard on the eyes because you are using the tiniest crochet hook in the world, uh, but it was fun. I might do some more, I'm not sure. I think these will end up being gifts. I'll probably just find their way into Christmas packages next year. But it was fun. Like sometimes it's just nice to sit down without an agenda and do something. And then my last crochet thing, I promise, is this is a back scrubber. I still have to weave in the ends. So I'm making these for my kids for Valentine's Day. Um, so I use this one. It's the Red Heart Scrubby. This is 126 grams altogether. I used a full skein of the dark pink and then this uh, variegated was left over. And this pattern is on, I think it's on the Yarn Inspirations website, but again, I'll link it below. So I just need to make another one for my son. I am probably gonna have to buy some more uh, because I think all the scraps that I have still won't add up to 125, 126 grams. So that's the other thing that I like to do is log my yarn usage over the month. So this month I used 1,194 grams. So that's almost three pounds. Uh, I was pretty excited about that. And I was telling my husband, I used three pounds of yarn. <laughs> but then he just makes a comment like, and how many pounds are in your yarn closet? But anyway. Uh, it's all in good fun. So yeah, as you can see, I did a ton of crochet this month, um, but it's been my uh, it's been my comfort. Uh, it's been my comfort craft for sure. Going forward, yeah, I kind of already talked about that. I just it's winter time, and I find if I don't have plans, that's fine. It's okay. I'll get stuff done. I have lots to do. I enjoy it so we'll see what I make next month um, okay so that's it for crochet I'm gonna move on to sewing I don't have as much sewing to show you um, but yeah if that's all you wanted to see thank you for coming by 
So Christmas, um, Christmas sewing. Now I, one of the things I had wanted to do in my 12 days of Craftsmas was work on a Christmas quilt. I had purchased the fabric and I picked out a pattern and it's this retro Christmas quilt. And this is a paid for pattern from Amy Smart, Diary of a Quilter. So this is, this is the top and this is what I worked on after Christmas when it was just sad around here and it was just a nice um, distraction. So I won't show you the whole thing because you'll get the idea, but this is it. I took all the black fabrics that were in this fat quarter bundle. I took them out. I just didn't want black in my quilt. So uh, now I just need to make the quilt, do the quilt sandwich. I'm probably getting a new sewing machine and I think I'm going to wait to quilt this until I get that. And, and it's fine. Like I am in no hurry to get this done right now because it's a Christmas quilt. And I mean, if it sits around for another eight months or so, I'm totally fine with that as long as it's done by next Christmas. But I am happy that I got that finished. I'm so happy that I, at the last minute, picked out this fabric because I think that it's great. I think it's perfect for this quilt. Uh, it's a reasonable size. I think it's about five feet by five feet. So just perfect for the back of the couch and something festive then. I was just doing some scrappy things. So these were strips I had left over from a small quilt I made last year. Uh, when I squared up my blocks, I had all these strips left over and I just, I, did, I didn't want to throw them out because there were so many. So I kind of just made a big tassel with them. And then because, like I said, all my pot holders are in such terrible shape, I just thought, well, I'll just sew them together and quilt them and make a pot holder. And I did. And it's cute. And then the last thing, and there are a couple of you that are really interested in this one. This is my stained glass garden. This is this is a kit somebody gifted to me. So I thought I'd give it a go. I'd never done it before. So, um, I mean, I know I'm not gonna make the whole quilt because that's just too big. I mean, these blocks are huge. Um, and not to mention, like, so this stuff, I don't know how much of this I would need for the whole quilt. I think I used half for the block that I worked on. So I will for sure be doing another block. So I did the daffodil block and this is how it turned out. Um, I was reasonably happy with it until I don't know what happened down here, but this side is much higher than this side. So this is my learning block, but I don't think it is so bad. But it was nice to do the daffodil. They're one of my favorite flowers for sure. Uh, yeah, so this was my learning piece. So de it's definitely something that I want to like. I want to do some more of, just because I at least want to use the rest of this stuff. But what I was thinking, what I might do is I really like, I like this rose banner up there. And I like this centerpiece. So I might just do those two and sew them together. And, you know, provided I don't screw it up. And then it would just be, there we go. And then I wouldn't have this bottom piece on. I'm trying to make it not so crinkly. So it would be just a little wall hanging for outside my craft room. The only thing is these roses, it might be a little fiddly doing all of the, um, I'm calling it, call it leading. It's not leading, but the, the bias, um, with the fusible bias tape, that might be a little bit fiddly. So I think for sure I will do this one now. And then I know I'm going to have to buy more of the bias binding, but I'm thinking probably this would take a package and then 
if I did another block or this, that would probably take the rest of this package. So yeah, it was fun. Um, the I would say one thing I didn't do and I should have is I should have used fusible webbing, but I didn't. I just used freezer paper to, <clears throat> you know, trace and um, fuse onto the fabric and then cut it out. But then when I would put it on the backing, then you're pinning it. And that was kind of a pain. So I don't know why I didn't think to use fusible webbing. I guess because it wasn't in the directions. But I think in the directions they said you could use that uh, quilt, like the spray, the sticky spray. But for sure that would be so very helpful. Um, yeah. So that was, uh, it was fun. It was something new to do anyway. This one's pretty too. The roses. So this... The wild rose is the provincial flower where I live, so that might not be a bad one to do. And that, my friends, is it. That was super long, so we're already, I guess we're probably at an hour now with both of these videos. I'm not going to leave it so long next time just because I want to avoid this, and I'm pretty sure that February will, I'll probably do as much as I did in January, just because I'm not going to be doing any painting in the house and there's like nothing going on. There's nothing to do. So I'm not going to leave it as long. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come and do an update. It wasn't a quick update, but it was an update because I didn't need my next one to be epic, but I wanted to show you what I've been working on. Cause some people have been asking me, um, especially about the, uh, stained glass garden quilt. Um, wanted to let you know what I thought about that. So anyway, I'm going to go and not waffle as much as I usually do at the end. So thank you so much for joining me today and uh, we will see you again. Happy days, friends.